Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of my Sky Factory series. I'm going to continue on with all those projects that I was doing. You'll have to forgive me, I jumped in straight after recording the outro to episode 7, uh, so that way I could just get kicking on another series, because I've got still plenty of night left here for me to play the game. Uh, so I still haven't finished any of those projects that I'm working on, but I will come back very presently with some of those being done. Oh man, I have used a lot of resources to get to this point where I'm ready to craft something. So what I'm working towards here is the transfer node for energy. Um, you can use that to upgrade the lava generators that I have going off over here. Now you can't see it because it's happening uh, underneath the base because that's where I have them all placed, but there are eight of these down there. So I figured that I could make one of the times eight ones and have it running for less uh, space, the same amount of power. So that's what I've been working towards. So here is the recipe. You see it requires one of the breadth first search upgrades, four of the transfer node for items, and four gold ingots, and it has to be done in the QED. But it took a lot to get here, actually. I mean, this right here is nothing major, you know, the around the edges, but this, the breadth first search upgrade, hard to get to. So let's take a look at that. So you can see here, just itself, it's six redstone blocks, two speed upgrades, and a depth first search upgrade. The speed upgrade requires four blocks of its own, and I had to do this recipe twice in order to get uh, enough of these that I could make everything else that's required. And then if we go back, we can look at the depth first, which requires some of the speed upgrades itself, which is why I had to make more than one set, and then some of the redstone blocks and some more gold. So, now that I've gotten that breadth first search upgrade, let's jam over here to the QED. We will pop that in, and then pop these in, and throw the gold in. There you go. It starts work. It starts drawing on all of these things to give it power. By the way, if I didn't explain this earlier, the more of these Enderflux crystals you have, the quicker the QED works. It does uh, get some kind of... I'm not sure how much quicker per, but it does definitely work quicker the more that you have these around it. So there we go. We got our energy node for transfer. Now it's going to take me a second to rip out all of the lava generators so that way we can put them all together, but once I get them all ripped out, I'll be right back with you guys. And here we go, guys. So there we've got times eight lava generator. So I'm just gonna slap that down in the exact same place that the original one was. Lava will get fed in. You can see it has the same amount of storage for lava, um, but generates more power, takes the same amount of time, has the same storage capacity. So, this will be able to pump out a good bit more energy in less space, and it more efficiently uses the lava. So I think that I can keep it running pretty non-stop without any difficulty whatsoever. But we'll see. We'll see if this helps out. So, I am working on a few projects, but I thought I would just make this really small update in the middle of everything. Uh, food, now not a problem. I'm making some cow soul seeds because I need some leather for some future projects and then also like I said food no longer an issue because cow soul seeds will grow up to produce cow essence or essence of the cow is what it's called and if we look at the uses for essence of the cow you can see that eight of them will make 16 leather four of them in an empty bucket will make a bucket of milk nine of them nine of any of the soul essences actually make Bottle of Enchanting, and then last but not least, two of them makes six raw beef. So I can cook myself up just a whole mess of beef using just a little bit of cow essence, which is also really good food to eat, obviously. All right, and now for the thing that I've been working on. I've got a whole bunch of the material here to make some brand new armor. So I was looking into Ender.io a little bit more uh, deeply and I found this dark steel armor. So if we look here, you can see that dark steel has a number of uses. Um, this intrigues me because it's reinforced obsidian, which says that it's wither proof. Kind of curious about how true that is. There's a few other things as well. This also intrigues me because it says that 
you can make specific enchantments. Um, and then there, of course, is the normal armor recipes for it. But if you hold shift here, you can see that there are things that you can do to it. I guess at an anvil, you can put enchantments on it so that you would be able to have certain effects. Like that one says that it has a sound locator and night vision, and also a vibrant crystal which says that it's empowered, which I'm going to guess makes it to where it uses like energy instead of the durability of the armor. And there's one of those for each set of armor, and they all have different things on them. Pretty interested in the boots, which say that they can uh, make you swim faster. It's kind of cool. And the leggings, which have a number of things too. The armor has glider wings. So if we look over here, we can see that there's a recipe to make a glider wing. And then there is a recipe to make lighter wings, which is an upgrade for the chest piece. So I'm going to make all this armor right now while we're talking about it. <clears throat> I think I have enough. I'm pretty sure I have enough. Including making the glider wings. So there we go, there's the armor, and over here is the first glider wing, done, and then the second glider wing, done, and then two glider wings and two in the middle makes the glider wings upgrade. So we're getting dangerously close to flight, guys. So now I just have to look up the best way to put some power on these things. I'm pretty sure it's going to be using the mechanism stuff because all of that has an internal buffer for empowering stuff. So I might set myself up a solar panel or a wind turbine. I don't know. I'm going to look at the options, guys. I'll be back around then. So, as it appears that I was able to get the quest to update and accept the uh, manual detection of the five crucibles while I was setting up all the stuff over here, the next step of the quest is to get myself ten lava buckets. You can see here I <clears throat> kind of improved the system just a little bit to help my lava generation expand a little bit. I've got a bunch more crucibles generating lava and throwing stuff around. And then I've got some massive tanks down here. And as soon as these fill up and I'm pretty confident in my lava generation, I'm actually going to move these lava pipes that are going up to the various power sources that use lava. And I'm going to put them off of the tanks instead of off of the crucibles directly. But let's finish up this quest. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then, because lava buckets are always weird for me, let's come up here. Just click on one of these real quick so that all 10 of them are visible. And then click on the quest. You can see it's completed. Bam! Another reward down. So, let's hop over here real quick. No, I did. I'm going to start storing the hearts in here. So there's that. And then let's see what we got in the reward bag. 20 snow. Alright. I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but I'm sure I'll find something. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there. And then I'm just going to run back and put these lava buckets back. And then after I'm done with that, we'll see what else we can get done today. Alright, and here we are going to finish off another challenge. So you can see here I've already constructed five item frames. I've had five drying racks for a really long time. It's how you make the monster jerky. But over here on the crafting table, I've got the armor stands ready. So, eight of those. Boom. Challenge done. Claim that reward. So let's look at what the war reward bag gives us. 64 apples. Becoming less and less cool, the apples are. But oh well. Never going to hurt for food, as I say. So, let's go upstairs to the trophy room and throw these down. I'll try to find some artful way to display them. Okay, so, aside from the sword and the open blocks trophies that I've managed to collect, I think the armor racks will have to be in a row here there and then on the other side too I feel 
so that way they can sort of salute me as I walk by the different sets of armor there and then we'll just put up the five drying racks right over here I think yeah because I want to save that space for other stuff so right here I'll probably make some more of those just to fill that out there and then I've got the item frames which honestly I'm not sure if I'm going to keep these up or put anything in them more specifically I don't know probably I'll go ahead and throw those down there we go there we go guys that's a pretty nice trophy room just waiting for us to throw some stuff up there so let's take a look at that is that quest unlocked so the first thing as was the first thing that was mentioned before is all the different colors of wool so I guess I need to get cracking on that it is going to take me a minute to build up enough materials to have the die for that but I'll get working on it guys I'll be back and so here is my answer to needing a lot of wool to finish off those challenges you can see here I've got a 5x5 five five area of dirt and grass and a whole bunch of sheep and over here on the side I've got an MFR rancher so what this does is essentially it will farm any of the animals that are in the 5x5 five five area in front of it. Uh, it gets different drops from different animals. From sheep it collects wool. From cows it collects milk. From chickens it will collect eggs and so on and so forth for the other couple of animals that there are. So if I come down here to the bottom area, if I can get through the gate, You can see that I just have a very simple and basic setup down here just to collect the wool. Just a chest with a item transfer node on the bottom of the chest that's connected to the uh, rancher. You can see here I've got plenty of wool for what I'm trying to do with the challenges. And then in answer to the fact that I need all the different colors of dye, I can do what I'm guessing most of you know I was going to do and I made a seed for it so I've got a die seed just right there it's starting to grow I removed the little plot of earth seeds that I had because I've got plenty of earth essence I just don't think that I'm going to use too much more of that so I just replaced it I'm really thinking about going towards putting a farmer over here as well because it's working magically over here on the standard essence seed um, farm just goes and goes and goes as long as I keep it supplied with the farming tools that it needs. I'm looking forward to uh, getting one of enough essence that I can put one of the unbreakable hose in there so that way I don't have to worry about it anymore. But you can see here I've got plenty of nature essence and plenty of this. Um, most of it's gone because I made two pretty big seeds. I made a cow seed and then also the, uh, the dye seeds. But there you go. It is working away. I guess I'm going to use the harvester and planter that I made for that one quest to do a tree farm, since trees I know that it can handle quite well. So that way I can uh, get myself plenty of wood. Although I don't really need it, guys. I feel like I should just because I feel like I should, but it's not really a necessity. I'm kind of past wood at this point. Anyways, I'm going to get back to work, and I'll come back a little bit later. Oh man, I've gotten so much wool. Check that out just a few hours of operation and I've also conveniently got all of the colors together so I think now that I can make all the wool so that way we'll be done with the first of the trophy challenges so let's just run it through here put down the wool magenta yellow light blue normal green Gray, lime, purple, brown, blue, black, pink. Orange, Let's 
I am. Rose red. Light gray. And then normal white. Oh, I think that's us done. Yep, there you can see I've got all the wool colors for the first of the trophy challenges. So the next one is to put down a walrus. So let me throw all this wool up there, get together the stuff for a walrus, and then I will be back, guys. Hmm, I'm quite sure that was the recipe for the walrus before. I'm not sure why it's not going, guys. I'll have to look into that. But let me show you the setup that I got over here. If we come past my mechanism machines here, you can see down on my level that I don't care what's going on down there, I've got a big pool of water, and I've got an MFR um, fisher loaded up. So you can see here, it's this is a, it's GUI. Um, it has energy, of course, work. Every time one of those fills up, it makes a new item, and it has an idle timer just to keep from causing server lag if there is no water underneath it to do work with. And essentially what this does is it fishes for you it can pull up any item that could be fished. So if we look at the chest here, you can see this is all the stuff that I've gotten after having let it run for quite some time, actually. So I've got some raw fish of different flavors, a couple of enchanted fishing rods, a couple of enchanted books, a couple of saddles, and some other random things. So um, I will have to put a better storage solution here if I want it to keep running, but I'm not sure that I do, honestly. But I'm going to check into that walrus, guys. I'll be back in a little bit. And, with the help of Mind Tweaker, I just added the recipe back in. So there we go. Boom, guys! We got a walrus. So let's look at the next challenge. What is the next thing that we have to do <clears throat> towards that? Oh, right, right. Lots and lots of armor. Um, so eight sets of armor was the original challenge, just any eight sets of armor that are available. I figured that when I was writing these quests, these would be the eight sets of armor that would be the easiest to make. Um, that one, not quite as easy, since I haven't been to the nether yet. Um, but the others, for sure, should not be a problem at all. So I'm going to get cracking on that. I'm going to start putting them up on the armor stands that I made earlier. I will be back with you a little bit later. And here you can see uh, the seven sets of armor that I've been able to craft so far. I've still got the imp skin armors uncrafted. I still have not gone to the nether. But I think that's where I've really got to go next, guys. Um, but working towards that, I don't want to go to the nether without the ability to fly. So, I guess, before I can get done with this challenge, I'm going to have to work on this flight challenge. Uh, so I'm going to be getting the stuff together for that. But I did notice that the time was kind of dragging on uh, for this episode, so I think I'm going to have to call it there and uh, get back to you a little bit later. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. We made some pretty nice progress getting some stuff done there. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please do leave a like. It really does help me to feel like I am progressing and doing stuff that is enjoyable to not only myself but to others as well. Uh, if you really liked it and you want to continue watching the series, please feel free to, to, su <clears throat> to subscribe to me because you will keep seeing this series until I'm done with it, even though I am working on a few other things to show you as well. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you have a great day.